working hard in your club and showing that you deserve to be there and respect the decision of the, the court. But they are all they are desperate to be involved you know, in, in the national team. They really, really like to go, but you know, um, it's not in your hands. It's in your hands to perform, but not after the, the decision. That's only is there any sort of concern I hear some sin, to be honest, but uh, we cannot find, you know, nothing. And that is why we are quiet and calm and relaxed. Because I hope that nothing uh, going on and, and it was nothing, you know, uh, an action that maybe was punish, you know, him. But I think uh, I I didn't see nothing, you know, uh, more than that. Just to close off on Reece James, do you think he's being smart by being cautious and trying to recover well and giving his body a chance to breathe and not going on international duty? Uh, who was smart? The decision, Reece, or the who? No, I don't. Yeah, tell me. He's, he's well, I think it's. I think never is the decision of the player. It's, you know, it's about to, to assess and because uh, the medical staff, the sports science and the coaching staff, we always take decisions, not the players, because the player cannot assess the, themselves. They can sometimes feel something or, I don't know, but uh, he's just trying to go to the national team. And I think it's, uh, yes, it's, it's only, you know, after, I think, to, I think it's good for the, from the national team and, and, and then with the communication with the with the club is to take the best decision for the player and for the national team and for Chelsea also. But not a decision of you know risk. Risk is desperate to go. He wants to go, but I think that always is too part. You know, is the, the national team and the and the club. I think that take the best decision for him. And after all this. Uh, problems and now we start to feel, you know, fit again. I think I am happy that he's going to be with us because it's too weak to work with him again, and for sure he will, he will have the, the opportunity to, to join the national team in the future. Alex, tell I'm right there. How are you? <laughs> Fine, thank you. Four days on from that crazy game on Monday night, you've had time to reflect on but it. Why crazy? Why crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Average game, wasn't it? What have you taken from that performance and just how much did no, you I learned, I learned a lot from the Battle of the Bridge. Remember, I was seven, seven years ago. I got a, a lot of criticize. I remember after the 2 2 on, on, on this game because too many people say to me that was my fault because I don't give, you know, or don't teach the player in to how you need to behave, you know, and to control the emotion in a game like this. I learned a lot. I think that what I can say that uh, this type of game is about to, yes, our tactic, the technique is to play players, it's about the form, it's about the, you know, uh, the approach of the game, it's about how you prepare the game, it's about too many things, and also it's about the control the emotion, because I think one thing that we need to say but my player managed really well is the control of emotion. We, we really, to be honest, we played 10, 12 minutes. It's not in a good way, but well, how we want it. I think when we concede the goal, I think it was a big hit for us. We were, we were in shock a little bit, and I think we provide them the possibility to play and maybe play. Overseas. But we, after this, moment I think we start to control the game and then, then in eleven by eleven we create chances, all that was allowed. But and then we force them to make a mistake, like I told before and I think we say one hundred twenty million. Yeah, we do one hundred twenty million minutes, 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 minutes. Uh, lapsus. Um, and I think we deserve to win. And yes. Crazy but fair. Because in all the decisions, uh, the VAR were, was fair. Tell me one decision that was not fair. Um, and even, I think, few decisions more that Tottenham was lucky in some decisions. I think if we can, if we can say something, that the VAR was again us, no, for us. And when you watch the game again, and you watch the game again, and try to, try to learn from, from the game, I think, Tottenham was 
very lucky because we finish only with only two, you know, uh, less than uh, And the rest will, of course. Yes. No, not from me, not from me. Coach always is difficult. It's to, the, when appear the emotion on the pitch, it's difficult to control from outside. And I, I don't say, I wasn't the, the, the guilty seven years ago, I think so. But no, it's unsure, unsure, <laughs> the guilty today. You know, it's about that. I said, I learned. You know, I watched the game again, I think. I learned that was that really important to, you know, to have some, the players and the, how they keep calm in a tough moment. And then, you know, uh, to force them to make the mistake and then to win the game that we watch it. Another big game on the Sunday. Just how highly do you rate this city side? Is this the best team in Europe right now? For me, it's the best team, the best coaching staff, the best coach, the manager. Um, I we need to price. I think we need to tell the truth. And all the organization is one of the best or the best organization in the world. Because when you show the results that you are showing, it's because from the top and the bottom, you are doing the, the thing really, really well. And then we need to give credit to all the organizations in Manchester City, from the top and the bottom. And of course, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, we want to compete, and then we, are going, we, we, we really know that uh, there's going to be tough. But I think uh, we're going to go and try to compete in our best and try to uh, yeah, what you want. It's very important for us. Could it help Chelsea the fact they are going to the game yeah, but Chelsea never is. I think is the feeling of, uh, that you are under. The, uh, you know, I think the feeling always is you are Chelsea. When you say Chelsea is, you know, it's, it's impossible. You know, uh, the history is there. Um, no, I think we cannot go and say, oh, we are the victim of the, uh, the day on Sunday. No, we need to go with there. We trying to be protagonists with our personality, with our character. I think. Go to Monday to Tottenham and you know and, to, and then to finish the the game one four and, and one the three game I think I think show that we have character and talent yeah. and to compete uh, and to fight with the best yeah. uh, clubs on England no, and fine. now it's about to, yes to build that confidence that for sure will help us to to be more competitive. Thank you very much. Alex, BBC. Hi, Nicholas Jackson scored a hat-trick on Monday night. It's how important is that moment to him and no, growing and developing? No, no, no. Now it's easy to say, okay, he scored three goals, and it's always a process. And, and now, you know, not change my my view about our team. He is still young, he still need to be more mature, improve, he scored three goals, okay. Should the score or six? You know, that is the idea. Is you never know, know. But of course, ah. it's a ah, okay. situation that ah, okay. uh, okay. uh, uh, not arrive. Okay. Uh, it's about to, to try to find, you know, responsible. Of course, uh, we are the first responsible. But I think the most important is to be calm and relaxed. And he's a talented player. He's going to improve with time and scoring goals. And nice like uh, Monday helped him to be, you know, more. Uh, now, uh, no, uh, too much nervous and to approach the game in a different way. Christopher and Kunku is still continuing his rehabilitation. How is he getting on? Yeah. Twice a week, even in late the first days. I'm going to. We had a conversation, and he said to me, Coach, I want to be ready for after the international break, Newcastle. And I asked. Yesterday, and he said, mm, I, uh, you are a liar. You are a liar. And, no, no, I am a liar. It's true. No, no, you are a liar. He said, oh, it's close. I think it's close. And he's doing really, really, really well. Um, we are so happy with him in the way that he's doing the his recovery. He's very professional. Romeo Lavia is also it's close. We are training today on the pitch. And hope that next week we will go to the, to the team and see after uh, day by day process and see when we will be able to play the team.
You're welcome. Moose, good sport. Mauricio, how are you? How are you? I'm good. very well. Really good. Um, I guess you'd have played against Pep Guardiola. Sorry? Did you play against Pep Guardiola or Espanyol in the past time? Yes, of course. Yeah, what was it like as a player? And did you see then as a player that you'd go on to be... Like, a, like a coach. How he, he was. You know, so clever. Uh, yes, the, the type of player that Barcelona loved to have, you know, was a, a holding midfielder, very smart, very, very clever. So you could see then he was going to be one of the best coaches he's ever been. Yes, of course. I think he was lucky because he, he wanted to be a sporting director in, in, in Barcelona, but and then he lost the, the election and and then you no know, vote with, with another list to, to be a coach. But I think he's, yes, of course. Sporting director or yeah. coach, for sure. Is Man City's domination last few years, if, if they're winning the league and, and cups in, in England and now Champions League, is their domination good for football in this country? I mean, it's bringing people up a level, trying to compete with them, is it good that they're winning everything year in, year out? It's the reality. I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's the reality. And they are showing that they are, you know, uh, they dominate the the, the the English football because they deserve. And I think what I can say, is, I don't know, if it's good or bad. You know, it's the reality. They are, they are on the top, and they are, you know, the, the the team that you want to beat because you know you want to challenge because. You know, they are showing great, great quality. In, in Spain, you've seen Barcelona around with this one when you're in France, Paris Saint-Germain. It's not good to have one team winning everything every year, is it? Yeah, but I think all the other teams try to compete with them. They are doing things very really well. They are ahead of us. <laughs> you know, that is for sure is, is going to be our objective in the future, to be ahead of everyone and try to dominate also the, the Premier League. Mm. Now we need to be clever and we need to be smart to try to challenge them and to try to, you know, be in the place that they are now. All we are fighting to try to, you know, to, to pick uh, the place. And also quickly, four days on from Spurs and all the VAR stuff. So, yeah, Mikel Arteta last weekend saying, disgrace of the game at Newcastle defeat and Premier League's not the best in the, in the world because of the VAR. And we had Andrew Postacoglu after Monday saying, listen, respect the referee's opinion. Let's not have everyone standing around five, ten minutes for VAR check. Where are you? Are you more with Arteta or are you more with Postacoglu or are you in the middle? Uh, I will tell me because uh, uh, it's difficult to know the, the position because I don't want to be wrong. Anshe, what he said? He was basically saying that he was brought up to respect the referee's opinion. The VAR. No, the we need to respect the VAR. The officials that have to be the, the, the man that you respect in the middle, and you know, VAR, you need to respect what, what they say and what the referee says. And I said to the other day after my defeat in Newcastle, was obviously very unhappy and very articulate about. Goodbye. It's difficult to charge for me and to put him one on another side because I don't know actually in which side is. That's all right. I don't know in the middle. And I think it's clear that he's talking about one actor that maybe. Different people have different opinions, and it's not so obvious, you know. I think Monday was so obvious, the, all the decisions of the VAR, because we go back and we listen close after Tottenham and uh, Liverpool, and they disallowed a lot that was legal, you know. It's normal that complain close, or maybe it's normal to complain when Arteta believes that the ball was out or was fouled, you know. The, they push, you know, to to the, oh. the central back. I don't know. It's, it's difficult. The most dif the most important thing is to have clear idea that we cannot go back with the VAR. The VAR is here, and we need to accept that VAR is here. And now we need all together to try to find a way to use in the best way the VAR because the technology is there. We cannot go back. Now we cannot go back. We, we cannot go back. I I that is why I told you. I think oh, in my yeah, conference yeah. before. So yeah. The moment that we implement the VAR was the moment to talk and to say, be careful because the consequence 
or in the way that we are going to in the next few years to go with the VAR is going to be okay, it's really tough. But you know, now when the yeah. VAR is here, it's okay. But I accept that Mikel or Klopp can complain or Anche uh, can say another thing or you know or Pep or us. I think always we need to try to justify ourselves, you know, and we need to defend our class and our interests. That's normal. That we put, you know, the, the the war and in the way that we, you know, um, when it's for us, okay, but when it's against us, okay, we are going to maybe not criticize, but to denounce, you know, that wasn't fair.